Alrighty, so uh, we're continuing on with our investigation of parametric curves. Um, so I'm gonna continue to do a couple more examples. Um, if this stuff is making you nervous, just realize that you know what we're getting towards is doing calculus with this stuff. Um, so we're gonna talk about how to find derivatives of these things. Um, and so in those cases, you know, so you want so for this section, you want to be you know familiar with how to you know graph and draw these things. But um, and you know that will be on your second exam. But what we're really working towards here is you know being able to do calculus with these things, find derivatives, uh, define an integral, um, finding the area of these curves, area underneath these curves, those kinds of things. Um, and then those problems you'll be handed you know parametric equations, and you'll you know do the manipulations you need to do to those. Um, but anyway, let's continue on. Um, so we want to uh, sketch the curve. Defined by x is equal to sine of t, y is equal to sine squared of t. And so, you know, there isn't, you know, one good method of doing this. You just kind of have to play with these and try and find relations that make these things easier to work if you don't have a calculator. Um, so what you should notice here is that y is equal to x squared here. So that's coming from, you know, x is equal to sine of t, y is equal to sine squared of t. So then this relation has to be true. If I square x, I'm going to get the same thing as y. And so that tells me this thing is, this is the, so this equation here is a parabola. So we've seen that before. The problem though, if I look at my parametric equations, um, x is equal to sine of t. So x has to be between negative one and one because you know that x coordinate is given by sine of t. And we also have to have y is between zero and one because sine squared of t stays between zero and one. So what this tells you is this thing is the graph of a parabola, but I'm uh, on the x-axis, I always stay between negative one and one. And y always stays between zero and one. So what this is gonna look like is this part of the parabola. Um, and so what's gonna happen is, you know, this thing is just gonna keep going back and forth, back and forth, kind of that, that kind of back and forth motion. Um, and so again, so with these, you kind of just, you have to play with them. Um, there, again, there isn't a good way of just figuring out what these are outside of, you know, using a graphing device, uh, which we don't have for, you know, exams and quizzes. Um, okay. So we're going to move on to, I think this is the last example and this one's going to get, yeah, this one's going to get, um, kind of involved with the geometry, um, so this is the cycloid. And this has a couple applications. Um, so what the cycloid is, is if you imagine, you know, if you, if you imagine a circle and you, you know, paint a point on that circle and then you watch, you let the circle go and to like to the right, you let it roll to the right, then this dot will move along the edge of the circle, right? So what that's gonna look like um, is you're gonna get something that looks like, you're gonna get a graph that looks like this. These are all supposed to be the same size, but I'm not an artist. Uh, and that's gonna keep going. So if you, you know, if you were to like trace the uh, path that the point is going, this graph is called the cycloid. You know, this is supposed to be um, the x-axis in this case. And we're going to try and determine the equation of the parametric equations for the cycloid. And this is where we're going to get kind of, you know, super, geomet or super geometrically involved. So let's draw a set of axes. Let's assume that, you know, I have this part of my cycloid here. Let's draw what the circle looks like at this point. So, you know, maybe um, maybe that's where the point I've marked on my circle is. And so this is going to look like that then. Uh, let me use a different color for that line. Um, I 
I guess blue's fine. So, so this is the cycloid. Okay, and now I'm gonna draw some, um, draw some special points on here. Here we have this, the center of the circle. Let's see, um, and then you know this is the radius r here. So I'm just drawing some of these. Um, I know that this is also r because it touches the. Uh, bottom of the circle, bottom of the circle there. Um, and that is what I'm going to draw for now. So what I'm going to ask first is what is the, um, the X coordinate of the center of the circle? I don't care about the y coordinate because I know what the y coordinate of the center of the circle is. It's the radius r. Uh, so what we want to determine then is we want to determine um, we want to determine you know this distance here. That's going to be the x coordinate of the center of uh, the circle there. So what I'm going to draw um, um, now is um, so this we'll call O, this we'll call T. So the X coordinate of the center of the circle then is the distance from O to T. Um, and that's gonna be the same as, um, that's gonna be the same as the distance, um, it's gonna be the same as the distance of, um, let's see, get this right, yeah. So as this thing rolls, the distance I've gone is going to be the same as the distance as this arc here that I've, that's, uh, that I've rolled through. Um, and so if we call this angle theta, you know, starting at theta equals zero, there is no angle. It's sitting at the origin. And then, you know, it rolls along this red part of the circle. Um, and however, however, whatever the distance, you know, whatever the length of that red part is, is the distance it's gone through, is the x distance it's traveled because those two things have to match there. So if I want to get the, so this OT then is going to be, the length of OT is going to be the arc length um, of that red part. And that is going to be um, r times theta. So s is equal to r theta. So that comes from, you know, some geometry stuff. Um, so then the center of the circle then is given by r theta and then r. We're gonna need this um, to figure out, um, cause what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out the coordinates of, make it green, that green dot right there. And so in order to do that, we're gonna do it in terms of where the center of the circle is. So if I draw now, what I'm trying to figure out, this is the x coordinate of the. So down here, I just drew the x core, the x, uh, talking about the x coordinate of, um, the x coordinate of um, the green dot there. The y coordinate is given by. I'm running out of room here. Y coordinate is given there. Um, and so let me label a couple more things. Let's call the point where um, the green dot is P, and then we're gonna need to call this point right here Q. So I've just drawn it in there. So we're gonna do things in terms of these distances. The reason being, now I can do that the X coordinate is going to be, so if I look at, you know, in terms of, um, in terms of OT and PQ, it's going to be the length of OT minus the length of PQ, those two line segments. Um, and that is, so uh, OT is, uh, we know what that is. That's the, R, the um, X coordinate of the um, center of the circle. OT is R theta. Uh, PQ, um, if you look at, you know, the geometry there, that's going to be R sine theta. Uh, that's because sine theta, that's going to be opposite over hypotenuse. 
that's going to be, you know, the, op the opposite side is the length of PQ over the hypotenuse, which is R. So that gives you PQ. Length of PQ is equal to R sine theta. And that gives me the X coordinate of the, um, that's going to be the X coordinate of the, um, of the point, the green point there. So now we're gonna do the y coordinate, uh, and it's gonna be something similar there. So this one is going to be, um, this one's gonna be the length of CT. So CT is this one. And then, so I'm looking at the y coordinate now, and I'm gonna subtract off the length of CQ there. So length of CT is easy. Length of CT is the radius of the circle. Length of CQ, again, you can do some, um, do some trigonometry there, this is going to be um, r cosine theta. You can check it the same way. So take the cosine of, the, of theta there, where theta is the angle of the inscribed triangle there. Um, and I, I know at this point, everybody's eyes have glazed over um, going through this derivation. Uh, you only need to see this once. I'm doing it just because I don't want to just, you know, use this to write down the equations. I want you to see where the equations come from. Uh, but anyway, this does give me the equations of the cycloid, this is going to be r times theta minus sine theta. Um, and then we have y is equal to r times 1 minus cosine theta. Here, um, so here theta is my parameter. r is fixed. So theta is the thing that I'm letting change. It's um, my grant, my um, it's my uh, variable in this case. Um, so anyway, these are these are the important um, equations here. Um, there are a couple, also a couple applications. Um, there is uh, in um, you know physics again talking about electricity and magnetism. Um, I can't remember the exact um, problem, um, but I've done. I've, I remember there was some problem where. Uh, you're, you're looking at, I think it's in the magnetic field again, the equation of a part of quantum magnetic field, um, and you're able to get um, a cycloid out of it. Uh, the other application is the Bercristochrone problem. Bercristochrone. Make sure I spelled that right, Bercristochrone. Yes. Uh, so the Bercristochrone problem, um, this is the shortest time problem. Um, it's a famous problem. Um, that kind of came up, it invented a new branch of mathematics called um, calculus of variations. Um, so the, the idea is, you know, if you, if you wanted to find the, um, if you wanted to, a particle to travel between, you know, two points A and B, um, and you want to do it in the shortest amount of time, you know, if this thing was falling under gravity, what shape would you use to, you know, let's say you were going to let it be slide along a, um, slide along a rod, like at the doctor's offices. I don't know if they still have those for the kids, but you know, if you wanted to figure out what shape gives you the shortest time, uh, the answer is cycloid. Um, so um, this problem, again, very famous, came up with it, admitted a, a new branch of mathematics, um, which is used a lot in physics if you get to some of the higher, um, some of the higher um, theoretical stuff. Um, calculus of variations is used there. Um, so anyway, uh, that's going to be the end of this chapter. I know that last part was probably um, over a lot of people's heads, but again, what you want to take away from it is these are the equa equations of a cycloid. The reason why is what I've shown, uh, shown above. If you ever need to, you know, bore somebody at a party, um, you don't want to talk to anybody. It's always a good strategy. Uh, so anyway, um, I'm going to stop the video here. We're going to move on to section 10.2. This one's a longer one. Uh, we're going to start talking about how to do calculus with these things. So it'll be a little more exciting, um, hopefully.